Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. I'm Christy Scheib, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Chris Toich, University of Kentucky Forage Specialist. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Well, thank you so much for being here today. You are going to talk about something that is very important and might be very applicable to some of our viewers at this time of year. I am. I'm going to talk about repairing damaged pastures. For the last three winters, we've had excessive amounts of rainfall, and that's caused a lot of what we call pugging damage in pastures. That's hoof damage from animals in pastures. And we need to have a good plan to renovate those pastures this spring. Yes, sir. Now, what are some of the things that we need to be looking for to know that there is damage? So the, the place to really start is kind of assessing the damage in the pasture. And uh, a lot of times when we look just at our hay feeding areas, the damage is complete. So, so everything is completely disturbed. But when we start to move away from those areas, that's when we have different rates of damage. And the place to start is trying to figure out how bad the damage really is. And we like to put it in several categories. We can call it light damage or moderate damage or severe or very severe damage. And we have a couple of tools we can do that with. And, one is just a simple quadrat. I know not everyone's not gonna go home and build a quadrat, but the idea is that we, we wanna start to quantify the damage in that pasture. In this, when we lay it down in a pasture area, and we would do it in about 20 or 25 areas in the pasture, and we can get an idea of how much of the pasture area is actually disturbed. So if we had one, one disturbed area, that'd be about 25% of the pasture area. And then the second thing that we look at is is how deep that damage is. And this is just a ruler or a grazing stick. Mm -hmm. And if we stick it down into the hoof damage in the pasture, we can see that if it's one inch or two inches or three inches. And then we can use this chart that we have here. And this chart actually will let us put the depth of the damage and the amount of disturbance. And it categorizes the damage into light, very light, severe, moderate, and so forth. And then from there, we can start to make a plan on how we want to renovate our pastures. Right. So if someone were to have light damage, what action could they take? So if, if we have just light damage in the pasture, then really what we need to do is just allow that pasture to rest in the spring. So we could take a soil test and adjust soil fertility according to that soil test and just give it a little extra time to recover in the spring. And the soil testing is something that we do at the extension offices in every county in Kentucky. Right. And if we move to the next category and we have moderate damage in our pastures, um, we again can take a soil test and see where we are with our soil fertility. In this, in this case, we may want to overseed our pastures or intercede with a no-till drill, some grasses and legumes into our pasture to kind of fill in those spaces that were damaged. Um, and, and that's an important tool that we can use. We don't want to do a lot of tillage because if we do tillage on a moderately damaged pasture, we ri risk damaging the plants that are remaining within that pasture. Right. So a no-till no no drill would be ideal. And then the last level of damage that we haven't discussed yeah, it falls into that severe or very severe category, and that's a category where most of the plants have been destroyed. And that would be, a, say, for example, a hay feeding area. And most farms in Kentucky will have an area where they're feeding hay in a pasture, and um, the damage will be almost complete in those areas. Those areas really need to be tilled and um, smoothed out and then reseeded. So there's a couple different approaches. We can try to reseed a cool season grass and legume mixture in the spring, but often that's not successful because we have a high uh, weed pressure from summer annual weeds in the summer. So the approach that I like the most is to go into those areas, smooth them up. If they need any soil amendments like lime or fertilizer, apply those, and then overseed those areas with a summer annual grass, like a sorghum Sudan grass or a pearl millet or even a crab grass. And those, those summer annual grasses will suppress that weed competition, give you good grazing and maybe some hay production okay. in those areas. And then come in in that fall and we can actually uh, seed our cool season grasses. All righty. Well, 
Chris, you have some events coming up. Um, if you are watching and you have any questions, be sure to contact your local extension office and we'll be sure to tell you about the events coming up and any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.